In this video, you will learn about Mapbox GLJS. Now, before we talking about Mapbox GLJS, what is Mapbox? Mapbox is a platform with which you and I can create immersive solutions. Now, the differentiator with Mapbox platform is that they give SDKs for Unity development, Android, iOS, or even JavaScript. Now, if you were to compare this with the already existing map solutions out there, they would either go pick Android or iOS and they'll do a good job at it. But Mapbox does an exceptional job at all of these SDKs. So if you're watching this video in 2018, 2019, or even 2020, Mapbox is a solid bet. Now, furthermore, Mapbox also provides us a web studio with which we can customize the maps. Now, one of the disadvantages with Map was we were always tied to a default styling, a dark styling, or a street styling, or a light styling, and we had no other options. If we were to customize it, it would take a lot of effort, like moving a big mountain. But with Mapbox, with the web studio, we can pretty much uh, customize anything under the sun. In this video, we will talk about the JavaScript libraries which Mapbox, the platform, provides us. There are two uh, beautiful JavaScript-based libraries which Mapbox provides us. One is Mapbox.js and the other one is Mapbox GLJS. Mapbox.js is uh, an extension of Leaflet. It basically extends Leaflet's uh, the uppercase L. So it's pretty much a uh, leaflet plugin. And, but uh, Mapbox GLJS is a brand new library which uses WebGL. Now that's amazing. Uh, due to the fact that it uses WebGL, we get much more additional interaction benefits. Like for example, you can, uh, you know, you, we have control over the tilt. We can rotate the map. And the best part about it is that it's not much jank because it uses WebGL. Now, if you'd actually watched the previous videos which I had put, the, put out there, like uh, creating a solution with GeoJSON, raster tiles, or vector tiles, we had always created a solution to better understand what we were learning. Similarly, today, let's build a solution to better understand Mapbox GLJS. So, how about we create a solution to visualize the location, the coordinate of the International Space Station on a world map. Oh, that's, that sounds fantastic. Uh, you know, if you want to follow along and, uh, you know, follow the directions and build the solution by yourself, I will leave a link to the GitHub uh, repo in the description box below. So feel free to clone it and, uh, you know, follow along. All right, uh, so let's get started and check out the final version which you will be building. Right in front of you is the final version which you will be building. So here is a map built with Mapbox GLJS and with the library we are able to visualize the position of the International Space Station. Where is the International Space Station you ask? That is the rocket icon which is uh, at the moment right on top of Libya. So let's go ahead and zoom into it. So check that out. Uh, since it's using Mapbox GLJS, there is no jank, and we're able to seamlessly zoom in and zoom out at different zoom levels. And if you were to get lost in a location, you have a button with which, with Mapbox GL, we can fly to the coordinate where uh, you know we actually positioned a layer okay and there are also many more out of the box map controls which we can leverage and in the past we used to have uh, custom controls overlaid on top of maps with other libraries but with mapbox glgs they basically learned all of the lessons from the uh, previous uh, libraries uh, or the other open source libraries out there and they pretty much met parity with all of them and also they've added their own twist to really create those immersive applications. So right here, we can actually see a, a, a full full screen control. You don't need to have your own control and expand out the, uh, the browser. They know what are the features which is uh, needed to create those immersive solutions. So go ahead, check out the uh, documentation and you'll be pleasantly surprised with all of the options which are out there out of the box. Okay, so 
uh, right in front of you this this application it's it's an express application so in the front end you have the library doing all the bidding uh, doing all the hard work and also the back end it's an express application which is also doing all of the hard work so the front end sends a uh, xml http request to the back end asking for the coordinate of uh, the iss and the back end what it basically does is it sends uh, another request to a uh, public api retrieves the data which comes back in an uh, object and the object has the lat and long and what it does is it basically co uh, converts the lat and long uh, to a geojson format which is uh, required by mapbox gljs to pretty much to you know create a layer on top of its base layer so all right so let's actually dig deep into how to actually create this application well, before I forget, uh, let's quickly take a quick diversion and talk about the uh, you know customizability of the map. Like I said earlier in the video, Mapbox also provides a web studio with which we can customize anything under the sun. Uh, let me quickly show you a demo. So right in front of you is a uh, web studio which they provide and with this, you can click on any feature like right here i've clicked on the uh, landmass and i can click on a property and uh, i can change the color of that particular landmass and as i change it you could notice that uh, the uh, effect is you know it's actually becoming live so what happens is once you finish your customizations and you want to uh, you know uh, send it to prod or send it to production you basically save it and you publish it and well, once you publish it you are uh, given a JSON a styles JSON with which you can point it to the map which you will be building and that's about it that's all it takes to first create a uh, create a map and customize it and then point it to the map which you'll be building to you know bring it all together all right okay so let's uh, jump into creating this application the first thing is to convert the uh, the publicly available api response back into geojson format so this is the public api which is available for everyone to use api dot where the iss dot at and this is the id for international space station so if you were to uh, run a curl request you will be presented with uh, this json now our first objective is to convert the latitude and longitude back into a geojson format so how do we do that well we use a uh, open source node module out there to convert it and the module which is already available to us is geojson so let's first check out the back end and then we'll come to the front end so right in front of you is the uh, humble app.js it's an express application and we uh, pull in request and we have the geojson uh, node module to convert the latin long into a geojson format and we have our express application and when we have our path the path always uh, you know path and express they always travel in cohorts anyways so we create a new express instance and we uh, send the index.html when the user goes into uh, the root which is basically the slash and then we create a api to convert the uh, latitude and long longitude back into geojson format so anytime this particular api gets hit it uh, basically parses we use the geojson oss module oss stands for open source software so we use geojson oss module to parse the api response and uh, you know we basically go point latitude and longitude those are the uh, prereq to convert the uh, the coordinates back into geojson format so once you provide that we send the response back to the front end all right so that's all it takes this is an express application it does two things the first is to uh, uh, you know send the index.html to the front end and the second is to have another api which is uh, find iss to convert the uh, latin long which is available to us from a public api back into geojson format okay so now let's go to the core of the engine so in map.js uh, we create a new instance creating a new instance uh, creating a map with map boxes as simple as instantiating it like for example so you say new mapboxgl.map and then you provide an options 
I would strongly encourage you to check out the other options which are available. You'll be really surprised and you'll be really happy that you have all of those options available to you. And then, uh, you know, I'm not sure if I said earlier, there are a lot of options which Mapbox uh, provides. So let's go into the documentation quickly talk, talk about it. So you have the APIs, the code APIs, and then you have the geography and geometry related, uh, you know, APIs out there. And you also have uh, user interfaces. Now out of the box, they understand what it takes to create a map. And then they provide all of the uh, user interfaces which is required to add uh, more value to what you're creating. And you also have handlers. Uh, so like you know, box zoom handler, scroll zoom handler, you just read the documentation, follow it, and uh, in no time you will be uh, publishing uh, immersive solution. And you have multiple sources which uh, they can understand. Uh, they play nice with GeoJSON, video source, image, or canvas source. And finally, you also have events. So once you actually create a map instance, there are events which are generated on top of the map instance which you can listen on and do a lot of post-processing. Now that's exactly what we're doing here. So we are listening on load event, which is triggered on top of map by Mapbox GLJS library. And once we know that the map is loaded and is good to go, we go ahead and add a source, a GeoJSON source, and we give it an identifier, which is ISS in this case. And we also have a view layer on top of it. To specify a view layer, we uh, again have an ID ISS and type a symbol and we say what type of layout now out of the box they already provide mappy icons uh, which we can leverage so or you can also have your custom icons but in my case since they already have a rocket icon i'm just uh, leveraging it by saying it's an icon image and then this is the uh, you know identification to get that particular rocket symbol okay and uh, like i said earlier it's really easy to add uh, view controls on top of the maps in this case, I wanted to add a full screen control. So I go to the map instance and then add a control and then instantiate instantiate a new full screen control and that's about it. Okay, so the first thing what we do is to send a request to our Express backend to get the coordinate of the ISS map. So for every two millisecond, oh, every 2000 millisecond, which is essentially two seconds, we go out there, we send uh, XML HTTP request to the URL. In this case, it is find ASS. So wherever you basically uh, deploy the application, the domain, com domain comes into play. And then it'll, in this case, it's my local host, So it'll be local host slash find ISS. So we hit that API and uh, we get the response. Once we get the response, we basically set the data on the ISS source. But only doing that, we, uh, Mapbox GL does all the hard work for us and it positions the icon on top of the coordinate. Now that's all it takes, guys. That's all it really takes. And uh, if you were to get more fancy, feel free to check out the documentation and you know explore all the uh, options. So this brings us to a conclusion for this video. In the uh, next video, we will talk about how to go there and hunt for uh, oh, you know, open source uh, data uh, or the, the open data and how we can leverage them to really create a meaningful solution. So if you like the content so far, feel free to hit the like button and also subscribe to become a member of the channel and uh, you know, click on the bell icon to always be notified of whenever I uh, publish a new video. All right, so with that, I'll see you guys in the next video.